Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net, and welcome back to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at setting up some camera POV effects like these binoculars. Ah, very nice. And these night vision goggles. Pretty cool. And some various, uh, you know, sniper type of scopes with, uh, you know, particular effects, you know, such as uh, blurring and distortion. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we're also going to be taking a look at some of these camera POVs. And uh, you can see just some interesting looks uh, for these typical shots that uh, are in every movie. There's some kind of POV of uh, something happening. And we're going to take a look at setting them up. So let's go and get started. Now, what inspired this was I was looking to get some night vision goggles. So I was telling my wife, I said, honey, I've got to get these night vision goggles. And she said, well, what do you need night vision goggles for? And I said, for night vision. Anyway, she started asking a bunch of questions. And uh, personally, I think she's part of that daylight savings conspiracy. But anyway, without proof, let's go and move on. So I've got some footage of a bus. And we're going to drop that onto a new comp. And that's going to create a comp. Now, one of the main assets are these cool POV elements that I've photographed. So we've got uh, some macro shots of uh, just some different lenses, and we're going to be using them as part of the composite. So it should really make things look realistic, and we can combine them in, in some really cool ways. So let's go and jump in here and go ahead, load up the lens images, and let's take this lens number four, bring it out. It's pretty large. Um, this is a 1080p comp and it's a little bit larger than that so we can size it down. And let's set the transfer mode. So hit F4. We'll set the transfer mode to screen. And that'll give us a little bit of uh, the on lens effect that we want. Now the other thing we need to do is block out the area around the scope. So let's create a black solid. Here we go. Bam. And uh, we'll just call this uh, vignette and hit OK. So we'll put it below the lens element. Then we're going to take the uh, ellipse tool and just click in the middle here. I think if you hold down Control, Shift, and Alt, you can make a perfect circle. And we'll center that. And then we can set it to subtract. So there we go. You know, we can feather it out, hit F, feather it out a touch. And uh, I think we're good. So anyway, my name is Andrew Kramer. And uh, no, just kidding. Uh, we'll go over a few more things. So this is a good start. Now, one thing we can do is we can add more lens elements. So we could bring out lens number two, maybe set it to screen as well. And now we've got, you know, some more on lens stuff. We can even take, you know, the uh, circular mask tool and maybe even subtract out the middle part. So hit F subtract and then feather. So this creates a cool look, you know, where we can kind of see some grime around the edges. And, uh, you know, just keep in mind, you know, don't just grime it up just to grime it up. But if the guy is holding this old looking, you know, pirate scope, then maybe it's got a little bit of grime on it. If he's using like a futuristic high tech thing, you know, maybe this isn't the look, you know, unless you're looking to make a Steven Seagal movie and then just make it as cool as you can. Every shot just have as much stuff as possible and explosions. As far as I'm concerned, this scope is actually a missile launcher. It's got some action essentials here. Boom! We don't even need to track it in because, uh, you know, Steven Seagal movie, we don't even have to use motion tracking. Just put it on there. Scale it up. Nice. Um, let's take a look at uh, a few other ideas here. So, this is definitely a good start. But let's take a look at setting up the edges a little bit. So what we might do is create an adjustment layer. And we'll call this a color correction. I'll hit return CC. And we'll choose effect color correction curves. Now, I'm also going to take the ellipse tool. And we're going to make another circular subtraction. So a little bit smaller than the opening. And we'll hit uh, subtract and hit F and feather it a little bit. Then we can darken it down a little bit. And actually, I want to put this below the vignette. So I want to just darken down the area below the vignette. And then we can also do something like color tint it. You know, bring down the red channel. Maybe put the uh, blue channel up a little bit. So we got this sort of 
color bleeding from uh, from the lens. Uh, maybe even punch the green up a little bit. So I don't know, you know, if this is exactly realistic, but you know, sometimes a scope can have like a misaligned, you know, layer or something like that. And you just want to add a uh, fun detail. Hey, do a little blue uh, blue edge. That's what I say. And if anyone asks you, say, hey, Andrew Kramer said it was okay. No, no, don't say, it. don't mention my name. All right, so this is looking pretty good. A couple other ideas. One thing, let's duplicate the color correction layer. So control D and let's call this a blur. And we'll delete that and we'll just do effect, uh, blur, fast blur, and uh, just turn it up a little bit. Then if we hit M, we can, or MM really quick, we can bring the expansion in a touch. So let's hide the mask, bring that in. And so now we've got kind of a blurred edge, you know, um, which again, you know, depending on what you're trying to replicate. Now, another cool thing we can do is if we create again, an adjustment layer, we can play around with the optical distortion of the lens. So we can click on this, we can do you know, optical and there's a couple of different effects. We can do optics compensation and uh, we'll drop that on here and uh, we can turn up the uh, field of view here and reverse the distortion. So check this out. It kind of creates kind of a crazy distortion effect. So depending on how crazy you want to go, you could play around with that. Now the image gets pretty zoomed in. So what you could do is you could turn on optimal pixels and then choose effect, uh, distort, transform, and then scale it back up to, you know, where you want it to be, you know, in that way the image isn't getting too displaced from the original. Um, so that's a fun thing you could do. You could even use the bulge effect to, you know, create some inverted distortion, etc. So that's just an option. Now, a couple of other fun things, you know, if you wanted to do some crosshairs, you could do a black solid. And then it's just a matter of, you know, modeling with the mask tool. Just, uh, just draw a couple of uh, thin lines here. And then we'll duplicate this, control T, and then rotate it. And then we can put this below the lens, uh, the vignette. Now we can do a circle one as well. So we could do a uh, ellipse tool. Click right in the middle here, hold down control alt shift, and then take that mask, duplicate it, control D, set it to subtract. So it's gonna disappear because we've subtracted itself and then bring the expansion in. And so by doing that, we're sort of revealing the, uh, you know, the edge there. And then depending on what order we put this in, so if we put this at the top, it'll add it. Or if we keep it at the bottom, then we could go click in the middle here and maybe just do a single dot, you know, do a red dot side or something like that. So that's where you can be creative, have fun. Now, finally, uh, what about some night vision? You know, we're covering all these different concepts. What about some night vision? No problem. What we can do is create another adjustment layer, put it just above the bus, and uh, we'll add a couple of effects. One is a tint effect. So with the tint effect, we'll just click on like a green color. And uh, maybe add some noise. Look at that. Just add like a lot of noise and then just enhance it. Perfect. See that? Pretty good. Um, yeah, a little bit of noise. That looks good. We might put the uh, effect above the blur. There we go. We want that to be uh, happening digitally. And maybe some scan lines. So the way we could do that is with a solid, let's see, maybe a white solid. And we'll choose the effect uh, transition Venetian blind. So it's at the bottom there. And then we could turn up the transition amount, rotate this 90 degrees. So let's take a look. So this effect creates like a cool transition. But what we'll do is we'll set the direction to 90 degrees. And we'll bring the width in. And now we've got some cool scan lines. And then we'll set this to something like overlay put it down next to our color correction and we could shut our crosshairs off and uh, there we go, I've got a nice uh, night vision effect. 
Now, another thing is we should color correct our outer edge of our lens. So right now it's pretty dark. What we might do is add, uh, you know, first darken it down a little bit. If this is nighttime, we should make it look like that. And then maybe tint the color on the inside to match what's on the scope. So if we bring some of these colors out of the scope, we can start to, you know, cheat that look and maybe we add, uh, you know, a little bit of a flicker to it so that it looks like it's, you know, coming out of the scanner there. We can even take our crosshairs, set the color to be, you know, like yellow or, or light green or something like that, and maybe set it to add, um, you know, we'd have to crop it down, and then maybe add uh, like a glow to it, similar to this night vision version where I just have uh, a couple of these on-screen elements, and we've just got a little bit of a glow on top so that just you know makes it look a little bit more blown out all right so this is looking pretty good we could play around with any of these different things you know we could play around with the on lens effects um, let me just go and take you through a couple of the templates in the project file and I am gonna go ahead and post this whole project file up with all the lens elements so you guys can mix and match and uh, and play around with it um, I created a couple of different viewfinder elements so these are, you know, based on some classic, uh, you know, camera prism screens. And, uh, you know, you can obviously add to it, add various elements. Now, another cool thing, um, if we look at this camera four, notice we have, you know, this blurred out area inside of the screen element. And this is kind of based on a micro prism from a focusing screen on like an old camera. So if you guys have ever seen, you know, old cameras, where they, you know, they have this sort of like focusing area and, you know, and basically it was this texture that helped you focus your image. Now, it may not be relevant today, but, you know, it's a cool thing to try to replicate. So what I did is I basically created another adjustment layer and placed it, you know, below the border. Then just creating, you know, a shape around the area. So maybe this interior area. And then I just added a blur and then just masked out the areas I wanted to exclude. So subtracting that part. So now we've got this little blurred out area. And then we can even add a bit of a texture using a, you know, like a turbulent displace, which is on the screen there. And we bring the size down really small. And you know, we can play around with some of these different you know, texture types, maybe turn the size up just a little bit. So anyway, you got this little bit of a texture there and, uh, you know, just kind of a fun look um, if you're trying to replicate that, you know, old school kind of camera vibe. So, hey, a lot of people doing period movies, you want it to be authentic, don't forget the micro prism. Um, okay. So that's that project, you know, you've got the other scope projects. I've tried to name things as best I could, you know, edge color correction, edge burn, um, you know, same with the scopes. Things have, you know, names like border is the, is the vignette or the black border. And uh, feel free to mix and match, have some fun. And, uh, you know, hopefully it saves you some time. So anyway, my name is Andrew Kramer. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. And we will see you next time.